Do you feel like you're constantly racing to finish your storyboarding gigs? Like you never have enough time? Well then stay tuned because I'm going to share with you a few tips to help speed up your process and get you back on track. Welcome everyone to Beyond the Process. I am Lance Laspina, and with over 30 years experience having storyboarded films, video games, and commercials, I've picked up a few tips and tricks here along the way to help speed up my process. You know, as storyboard artists, we seem to always be on a tight deadline, which causes unwanted stress and can affect the quality of our work. So my goal here today is to demonstrate to you a few tricks that I personally use in my own storyboarding process so that you too can start implementing them into your own workflow. Before we jump into this, I feel it's important to mention that I will be demonstrating all of these techniques on a Mac operating system because that's what I personally use. However, all of this workflow is easily replicatable on a Windows or other computer-based operating system as well. So don't fret. Okay, with that said, Let's get started. Now, the first thing I do whenever I'm hired on a storyboarding gig is to organize my folder hierarchy within the finder so that way I can find whatever it is I'm looking for quickly and easily. Now, this hierarchy, it starts with a folder that resides in my client directory and I name it after the project I'm about to start working on. Within this folder, I then create three additional folders called assets, boards, and ref. I also like to put the project name in front of each category separated by an underscore. Let's take a look at the first one labeled assets. This is where I place things like the director's treatment, the script, director's thumbnails, perhaps an overhead diagram if provided, as well as any NDAs or other documents I was given to sign. The second folder I label as boards, and as I'm sure you guessed, this is where all of my layered project files reside. My PSDs, if you will. Now, if this is a commercial gig and there is more than one spot as often happens, then you may end up creating several folders named after each separate commercial. The third and final folder I label as ref, and of course, this is where I put any reference images that have either been provided to me by the client or that I've located and downloaded myself. Now, to speed up this entire process, I have a default set of folders that always live in my client directory that I can just duplicate by holding down the option key and dragging. I can then go about properly naming these folders by typing in the project's name. The last thing I'll do to make the project's parent folder always easy to access is to drag it into my finder's sidebar. With it now living here, I can easily find it no matter if I'm navigating the finder window or an open and save dialog box. I promise by using this one simple trick, it will save you a ton of time. Now that we have our folders all organized and ready to go, let's jump into how I organize my layered project files or AKA PSDs. Now I do this once again to help make my life easier and less stressful. Doing what I'm about to show you is especially helpful when the client asks for revisions and we all know that is definitely going to happen. Here we are in Sketchbook Pro, which is my drawing software of choice. But of course, this will translate just the same to any program that uses layers. Speaking of which, let's take a look at my layers. You'll see I have various groups such as arrows, sketches, and 185 panels, 185 being the aspect ratio of the frames. We'll start with the sketches group. If I toggle down that group, you can see that I have subgroups labeled as frames one through seven. Now each of these frame groups is exactly the same. They're just numbered differently so I can keep track. I'll open up the frame one group so we can take a look inside. Here you'll see I have five layers and one additional subgroup called ref. This is of course where I can import a reference image if needed. Now let's jump to the rough sketch layer. I usually have the opacity of this layer automatically set to around 50%. This is because I'll eventually be using this layer to draw over top of as I clean up my line work. If I turn this layer on, you can see my initial sketch. 
Once this has been established, I usually will start to draw next on my foreground layer. I save this layer for drawing in my characters and, no surprise, I draw my backgrounds on my background layer. So let's now turn these two layers on so you can see what I mean. Keeping your foreground and background layers separate may sound like it's an unnecessary step, but trust me, when the client comes back with a note to either move the character or change the perspective of the background, this makes it much, much easier to address. The remaining two layers, shade and color, are exactly what they sound like. You'll notice I have them placed above the foreground and background layers, and as a result, I have the shade layer set to multiply and the color layer is set to color. I'll turn them on one by one so you can see how each layer affects the frame. Before I reveal to you the app I use to organize and display all of my reference photos, here's my creative partner, Mr. Shane Patrick White. Hey gang, if you click the link below and sign up for our Substack, you'll receive a free visual storytelling guide that covers all the basics of storytelling, camera work, and composition. Whether you're a storyboard artist, comic artist, or filmmaker, it's a great way to get you up and running. And it's our way of saying thank you. All right, now that we have both our folders and our project layers in the proper working order to increase our efficiency, I want to briefly touch upon an app that I now use to organize and display all of my reference photos. The app I am now using is called Eagle, and it's everything I've been searching for in an asset manager, plus much, much more. And good news, it works on both Windows and Mac. Now, I want to be clear that I am not at all being sponsored by them. So with that disclaimer out of the way, let me show you how I use it. If you've already collected your reference material and have placed it into your ref folder you created as I showed you earlier, then you could go up to this plus symbol in the upper left and select import from folder. Once you do, navigate to your ref folder and then click open. Eagle will then automatically import not only your ref folder, but any subfolders you've created as well. If you take a look at my example, you can see subfolders I created in order to keep my reference organized by subject. If you'd like, you can also color code the folders for better visual recognition. Clicking on each folder will then display its contents. The slider at the top will control how large the images are in the viewer. Then if you'd like to enlarge one to see it in better detail, just double click on the image. To go back, you can just double click once again. Now, the really cool part about this app is it has a super useful web browser plugin that integrates directly with the app to make gathering your reference a total breeze. And good news, it works on various browsers, including the two that I use most, Chrome and Safari. Let's open up Chrome and just Google a random term like woman doing parkour. Click on images so the entire page is now filled with women doing parkour ref. Because I already have the Eagle web browser plugin installed, when I click on an image to make it larger and then start to drag it, you'll see a handy pop-up window appear, giving me a choice of folders to which I can import this image into Eagle. Once I drop it into a folder, I'll receive a notification that it's been imported. If I then click on that notification, it takes me directly back to Eagle, where I can now see the newly imported reference image. Pretty darn slick. Using this browser plugin will absolutely revolutionize the way you search and download your reference material. And in doing so, it'll save you valuable time, which of course is what this video is all about. Now, this app does a whole lot more than what I've been able to show you in this short time. And I do plan on doing a deeper dive into it at some point in the near future. So please let me know in the comments if this is something that you would find helpful. Okay, gang, that is all I have for you guys today. If you enjoyed this video and feel like you got some serious value out of it, which I hope you did, then please consider helping us to produce more videos like this by liking the video and subscribing to our channel. You should also know that we have a Substack, which is free to join, and contains a ton of useful articles and full-length videos. Link is in the description box below. I really appreciate everyone tuning in today, and as always, thanks for watching.